characters. Aye. So, June, thank you. Thanks so much for coming along to do this. You're very welcome. Um, it's exciting. I know you're one of the first people that I thought of um, from a personal point of view well, to get you along. Like you've got a <laughs> that. But then you, you were saying yourself, how do you describe what you do? Uh, it's very difficult. Know. Give it a bash. Give it a bash. Well, how would I describe Author. I think I live, I walk my talk. I think basically I'm one of those people uh-huh. that like to. Um, I'm a wee bit like this Billy Conley, the spiritual world, I suppose. Um, I tell stories and help people through what I've experienced in life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we're all um, spiritual beings having this human experience. Mm-hmm. That um, So I, I try my best to p- point people in the right path or... Um, you know, guide them in their, their spiritual aspects. <laughs> I'd never call myself a guru, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, do the best I can every day Aye. To, to help others. So should I stop calling you a guru? Because I Please constantly do. call you a guru. No, it's not a term I like at all. That. No right, way. okay, apologies. No, no. Apologies. Uh, I think we're all the same and we've just got varying different degrees of experience in life. Mm-hmm. And we use that to the best advantage that we can. Aye, absolutely. I experienced firsthand. I don't mind talking about it. Coming over to see June last year, mm-hmm. um, I was in a really bad way, and um, June and um, a lovely daughter Siobhan seemed yeah. to be tuned into me. And yeah. any time I fuck up my life somehow, <laughs> they're, they're, they're on top of it. They know. It's because we know. understand that bit. <laughs> they know um, and reached out, and so when I went over to. June's yeah. house. I'm not quite sure what you done. There was sprays involved. There was oh, relaxation, was, and yeah. I came out feeling revived. So yeah. when you say sprays, I mean what? What? what explain a wee bit about that because that's kind of I can't even imagine what, what that, that is. I, um, neither can I, and I make them. <laughs> uh, I didn't really start doing anything like that till I come back to Lanarkshire. Right. I went away to Inverary for four years, really to get away from here and the you know, what was my life at the time. And when I come back, I had this urge um, to start making these energy sprays. So right. they're kind of made with just water and mm. alcohol. Um, that keeps them pure. And you and I use, like, I know this might sound a bit airy-fairy, as our Siobhan would say, but I use, like, lunar energy. So the, the moon... The sun, everything goes into it. So it's gathering up energy in the water. Um, and to that, I'll maybe add crystals or right. sound. and So everything retains, water retains memory. It retains energy. So then that becomes the mother essence. I'm not giving too much away because everybody will start <laughs> making them. Um, but, and then the to recipe. that, I'll add maybe some uh, essential oils and, and things once the mother essence is made. And, right. and they help to create an energy space around your body. That's what they're doing. So it's Good. either it's, it's quite interesting. It's not something I'd dabbled in before. And I'm certainly not a clinical aromatherapist. Mm-hmm. So the oils are just a little part of, of the spray itself. The mm. energy comes from the when I make it initially. So how, how, what got you onto that? What led you down that? Is it something you researched before or is it something you, you were drawn to? Or? I live a very interesting life, Stephen. I know so that. for me, I, I get these ideas and um, kind of, how would you put it to people out there that doesn't sound very fairy? I, I really do hear things and, and get a sense of knowing that mm-hmm. I have to do something. Um, as you said earlier, it's like an inner knowing, like maybe you were needing some help or whatever. Um, so it comes in that form. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just that it started off, I have to make sprays. I know that that's, hadn't a clue mm-hmm. how to do it. So I just trust the process and trust how to move forward with it. Right, okay, okay. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll, we'll take take it back a wee bit as well because you mentioned getting away from here. Yeah. And we'll, 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 have a, we'll have a chat and if you, if you don't feel comfortable talking about anything... Oh, that's but I, I wrote think, a book, so that's well, all exactly. there anyway. I think it'd be a good idea to... I mean, I've read your book. Um, do you know, I bought your book a while back. Um, tell, do tell us your story, I suppose. What's, what's um, your journey? I, I suppose in one way I've been very lucky that I have never been plagued with 
illness like many people <clears throat> suffer. Yep. Or I'm not being in a war torn country that, you know, children see and things like that. Um, but I'm just your average June Doe that had an upbringing that had a lot of, of issues around it to alcoholic parents. And um, I, I suppose growing up with that addiction in the family as well put a lot of issues on me. Um, and you don't realise as children, this is why I, I do what I do now, children soak up all of that stuff from yeah. from their, their born, mm -hmm. sometimes even before they're born. So for me, it's um, uh, my childhood was, was rough and in that sense, you know, just seeing parents fight, argue. Um, but that's common for a lot of people, you know. Um, so it's nothing, I'm not extraordinary in any sense in that way. Um, but I've had two really tough relationships. And um, I think when you're juggling life um, and you're constantly, your self-esteem is at an all-time low, mm -hmm. as mine was, especially after the second one. Um, and you're juggling two alcoholic parents um, and you're dealing with other issues within your own family, um, it just became too much mm -hmm. for me. Um, and I had I was running a little uh, shop mother at the time, Inspirations, and people would come in and offload all their stuff in me mm -hmm. every day. So I'd go home at night totally exhausted and it came to a crunch point and I thought, it's time for me to... I need a new direction. Mm -hmm. I need something different. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember clearly one night waiting on somebody coming to pick up my my leather suite. I had to sell it because I had no money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fell over the top of my hoover and I broke my foot. And, you know, sometimes that happens in life just to get you to totally stop. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't earn money. I had, I had nothing coming in. And I... Uh, I started writing the book and I thought at that point something needs to change here. Mm -hmm. And my sister offered me a job in Inverary to run a bed and breakfast. And I thought, do you know what? I'm leaving. Yeah. It's time for me to go. <clears throat> and yep. I went up there for four years and took nothing to do, with anything spiritual or anything like that. Time out just to be me and rediscover who I was again. Because mm -hmm. I was kind of lost. I think it'd be fair to say, you know, for people in that kind of the, I don't that kind of circle. Um, you mentioned inspirations. I remember that shop over Motherwell, yeah. um, and anybody that I mentioned your name to, um, they remember that, and they remember that going and offloading their emotional baggage. Yeah. Um, is that not where David David Hamilton met you? I met David through Siobhan, actually, um, and through a, another friend I had. And he was giving a talk in East Kilbride, and Siobhan was doing pharmacology at university at the time. So she needed a wee bit of help with a sub. She was actually um, working on alternative drugs for heart medicine. Right. Um, so she was going down the alternative route in pharmacology, right. which was quite unheard of. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd heard about this chap called David. So over we went, and that was about 2004. Mm -hmm. And we've never lost touch since. Aye. You know, we just struck up a friendship. It was one of the things that you just felt you'd always known somebody, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and David's been, uh, you know, he's been a great support to us and, and we have with him. Ah, he's an amazing man. I remember he, because he gave credit to, to you in one of his talks. Oh, right, did he? Uh, the, the alona. Um, he said if it wasn't for you and Siobhan, he doesn't oh. think he'd have had that break um, to where he is now. Because we believed in him, you Aye. know. We believed in what he was doing and he's such an egoless man. Yeah. He's just, a, he is, he's a gift. Aye, absolutely. He's a gift. So was it, did you always live in Bells Hill? Was it Bells Hill you lived? I came time? from Wisher. Right, okay. And uh, I moved to London when I got first married um, and then moved back and the house he gave me was Bells Hill right. uh, when I came back up here, you know, so, and that's where my kids were. They were brought up in Bells Hill. Was your family, so they were, your, your parents lived in Wisher? Mm -hmm. We were okay. from Wisher. All from Wisher. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Initially New Mains. Um, you know, so I've kind of <laughs> never really left Lanarkshire. <laughs> aye, aye. I'm just going to grab a drink. 
Yeah. So you're saying you, you wrote the book. So for them that it's not um, familiar with it, um, what's you know what's the general content of this book? Um, it's my story right. from I was born. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it went on to Amazon, you've got to put it into brackets mm-hmm. of Aye. some description in Amazon. And it went under um, autobiography. And I don't really like that term because it's not anything that, you know, you, you see other people doing autobiographies that are maybe scientists and actors and all of that. It's not that type of story. It's very much about everything that happened to me. Mm-hmm. It was about five or six years writing it. But every time I got th- to the end of it again, I started at the beginning and each time I went through it, more and more bits of it came out because I'd healed those parts of me mm-hmm. that were very pained mm-hmm. from what happened. Um, and I recognised that I was just repeating so many patterns and going through the same thing. It was like the hamster wheel I was on and I, I couldn't go off it, you know. But by writing the book, it was probably the best thing I ever did because... I found a certain amount of inner peace when it went out there. The only person that worried me was David Hamilton because he did the back cover for me and he he read it before it went out and he said, uh, oh, that was a page turner, Junzi, but he said, you're awful <coughs> brave putting your life out there like Aye. that. And it, up to that point, I had never actually given that a thought. That wasn't the purpose of the book. Yeah. You know, it was for people... To see themselves in it. Aye. And, I can see and, that as being a, a almost like a, a, a form of counselling. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if somebody goes to a, a counsellor and they're, they're pouring their heart out to them, that's almost like the same as what you're doing, but you're putting the words on the paper. Absolutely. Do you know? So by doing that and putting that out there, potentially that's you kind of letting go of that or totally. you know, just leaving it in the past or... You know, coming to terms with what's happened and moving on, do you know? So. It, it most definitely was, Craig. And, and what I realised, that I was still in the blame and shame part of my life where I blamed all those people that had hurt me, you know. Mm-hmm. But I had then to look at me and take responsibility for my part in my life, you know. Mm-hmm. It wasn't all their fault. And even if they'd hurt me or they were the cause of my pain, I I allowed that to happen. You know, I allowed, I took yep. them back I, for, you know, I, I, I put up with it. But I had to look at that part of me and say, well, you know what, you need to be responsible for that. And I looked at the dramas that I was living in, everything was dramatised mm-hmm. and I had to stop reacting. I realised that by letting go of that, um, I could find that that peace inside. It really was very healing. It was a healing thing that I did. Um, and I would encourage anybody that's got a story inside of them, even if they never publish it, get things down in paper, you know, and let them let them go. I think so. I think <clears throat> that's exactly right. And it's like, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, when people write autobiographies, it's usually scientists and stuff like that. And you maybe don't, people maybe don't think that their stories is as important as someone else, but that's completely the opposite. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. matter where you're from, who you are, what stature, what class. Every story is important. I believe that it's going to hit home with someone else. Totally. And that's going to help someone. And again, that's a, a big part of what we are doing as well. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And the different people we're speaking to as well. And it is, it's massively important. And I hope there is positive things out of every single thing. that You know, every single story that each uh, person has. Everybody has you know? an important soul story. And, and all the players that are part of that story are important as well. And what you... you I mean, that kind of teaches you not to judge because, you know, I, I could, I did that. I did that a lot. You know, I was judging my ex-partner for the way he treated me or my ex-husband and how he treated these children or so on and so forth. But until you go into their shoes as well, you know, you can't always judge a person in that respect. And that's what I stopped doing as well. Mm-hmm. And, and just um, seeing them more as people that had actually helped me grow. Aye. That's a hard one, you know, for some to let go of that pain, you know, but that's the way I see it now. That, that's uh, I can relate to that. That's certainly the point I've arrived at this year. Um, I can add a, an epiphany last year, late last year. 
But there's that. I think it's Tony Robbins that said, "If you're going yeah. to blame everybody, if you're going to people blame people for the bad that's happened in your life, you've got to blame them for the the good that's happened in your life as well." Yeah, because you, <clears throat> exactly as it's it's these things all they all make you grow. Of course they do. Aye, you know, I mean, I always t- tell people never be scared of your shadow because it's your shadow that holds all the the issues that you need to face mm-hmm. for you to grow stronger mm-hmm. and and to learn more and to help more as well. And I think a lot of people they tend to avoid that part of life. You know, they want to hide away from it. It's not healthy yeah. at all. You know, mentally or emotionally healthy. So <clears throat> the book for me really helped me see who I was. Yeah. I, I yeah. think it, I think it's interesting as well, David saying about you're very brave putting that out there. <laughs> I think that's you frightened it, <laughs> but I think that's a general um, the general line that goes out. Um, I did the other the dad poddy thing, which is about trying to <clears> get <throat> in shape. Shameless plug for that, <laughs> um, um, which is me shaming myself. And I had a couple of people message me about <clears throat> that because some of it touches on my mental health and things right. like the struggles I've had with that. And the people say, you're so brave doing that. But again, the same as you, mm. I don't see it as that. No. It's not bravery at all. It's just the story. And it just so happens some of the parts of the story are quite dark. But yep. if that resonates with somebody and, you know, it helps move them on as a human totally. being, then great. That's I don't think it's brave. <clears throat> and that's the thing, though. It's like with these things, when people say you're brave, putting, putting stuff on, like, I, yeah, do you know what I mean? you're putting yourself out there. But the, the truth of the matter is some people are going to like it some people are going to hate it yeah. and some people just won't care. And that's just, that goes with, without saying for everything. Yeah. It doesn't matter if one person can identifies with it. It means that you're, you're doing something right. In fact, it doesn't even matter if no one watches it. Let's let's put it that way because you're expressing something and you're getting that out totally. into, into the world. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, and Craig and I said that when we first started this is... Um, yeah. We're doing it for the right reasons. We're not. I, we don't think we're going to be, be millionaires off the back of this. <laughs> well, you'd certainly know when you write a book either. I can assure you. But for, any, for any sponsors, go for it. <laughs> um, or publishers. Publishers. I know. Yeah. I know. Um, it's a book. Did you have a publisher for the book? No, that's self published. Self published. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it costs a lot of money. I mean, I, I would love to do another book, and I'm, I would love to do a book with Siobhan. Um, because really what I study is more about how we pass our patterns and our programmes of behaviour on from generation uh-huh. to generation. So I can see in her parts of me and and that upsets me because I always said, if I do this, then my children should learn from it and grow from it. But that's not always the case. Uh-huh. And I see my son's very like his father. And Siobhan's very like me. And she does make, you know, decisions and choices that I th- had hoped that she might not make, you know, at times. But there, this is her journey. This is her journey. She has to make the choices herself. But I also see that, you know, there are a lot of family programmes comes up. Um, so that fascinates me. And I would like that she puts her energy into that as well, mm-hmm. you know. Because um, we can only look at, what we give our children in, in the most positive of lights. I mean, we do our best, don't we? We do our best to, to give them the best start in life. Um, and uh, But for her, I, I think um, she would she would confirm to a lot of people what I believe happens within a fam- family <coughs> circle. Does she recognise herself? Yeah, the, the she patterns? does. Yeah. She, I think she does. I th- she'll, she'll tell you, no, I'm nothing like my mother. <laughs> but I, she, oh, she is very like... Uh-huh. Me in many ways, definitely. Aye, aye. I mean, I can certainly see some of the same traits. Um, I don't know. I'm obviously further removed from you and Siobhan, and you're a lot closer. But yeah, aye, I just see the good. I see the good. Oh, that's nice. He's a suit. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> um, so, I mean, how do, how did you go about that? The, the book, did you print, get it printed yourself? Um, you, how, how does that all work? It's quite a process, actually, because once you have it 
well, you think you've got it done and you've been over it and over it and you've spell-checked it to an inch of its life. Uh You know, it's then passed to, you've got to pay for an editor to come in and then they check that grammatically it's reading okay. Mm -hmm. And there were things they wanted to change in my book, but I wouldn't wouldn't have let them because that's... (coughs) my heart and soul that's went into that. So I just felt, no, you're changing something that I feel is needed, you know. Uh And for two or three years after the book went out, I used to do a wee soul note every day on Facebook. And it was just to get people to think or to feel or, you Mm -hmm. know, to perk them up. And they're all part of the book as well. But I'm glad they never, I I stood my ground with that and said, no, it's they're not coming out, you know, that they're staying where they are. Because they were my private thoughts again, put on paper, uh-huh. you know. Um, but uh, once the editor has looked at it, and when the editor looked at it, she then said, you need a solicitor now. <laughs> right. <laughs> because <laughs> it was my book and I was, I had changed the names of certain players in my right. story. Because obviously I there was no bad feeling there, but I didn't want them necessarily feeling under attack or I was speaking badly of them Uh or whatever. And I don't write the book that way. It's not written to to blame anybody or, you know, to poke a finger at them and say, God, you know, what a twat he was or Mm -hmm. it's not for that purpose. Um, So I had to get a solicitor to check, make sure that legally I was okay to put the book out. Um, And then it goes to... Uh, to get typefaced and, and you know, put... It, it, I think it's a company that I use called um, Indie Authors mm-hmm. Scotland. And so they've got the whole set up there. So then they'll put that and do it in a way that that's your pages all ready for, for printing. Then it goes to the, the printers and so on and so forth. So it's quite a lengthy process. Do they put you in touch with the solicitors and stuff? They yes, I, I, for that? they helped me with all of that. So they had somebody on hand that would check it all over right. and they have other editors that will look at your, you know, your wording and make sure that it reads okay. And right, it'd be super specialist. I can't imagine just popping into Carties down the road and saying <laughs> I've got a book. No, <laughs> it doesn't go. quite work like that. So everything, you know, everything's got a cost attached to it. So it's one of the things, If honestly, if I win the lottery tomorrow, I would definitely have more books out there, you know, because it does take a bit of cash and it's not something that... So was that surprising then, a bit stressful at that, at that stage yet when you had the book and you're like, I, I, you know, I didn't realise how much effort and work this was going to be to actually no, get out it there. No, every bit it was exciting. Good. I can honestly say there wasn't a bit that, the only bit when she said the solicitor and I thought, oh, oh, maybe, you know, Aye. that could be. And I never really thought about that either because I'd changed the names of partners and things so that, and, and it was the one that came up with the name of Tom and Dick. So I was waiting on Harry still to come in, you see. Um, but uh, <coughs> Harry never have appeared. Uh, but uh, so uh, anybody that knows me really well would probably have an idea of, of who I'm oh. referring to. But that's not, Aye. that wasn't written for that purpose. Aye. You know, there's no blame there or anything like that. Just telling your story. What about the, uh, you mentioned the term airy fairy. So I want to go back to that because... You know, you have some people listening um, we spoke about the sprays and lunar energy and things uh-huh. like that that go into it. Um, do you think these are the kind of things that you need to believe in for them to work? Or do they just work? What you, You're going to have sceptics out there. Oh, there's always going to be there people is. that are very um, left-brained, logical people that, uh-huh. that don't Aye. believe, you know, in... in the spiritual aspects or energy medicine and things like that, you know. And I had them in my life as well, you know. Mm-hmm. So there was not a lot of encouragement when I first started opening up to that side of life. But I do, I'd been, like, really intuitive as a child. So I would see things and not understand what they were. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I had parents that weren't interested in that or didn't encourage it or poo-hooed what I was trying to say to them. I kind of shut all that aspect to me down. Um, but it, it it's always there. Your intuition's always there. Everybody is intuitive. Everybody has gut feelings. So so touch on that. You know, you, you said as a child you were intuitive. Uh-huh. What do you mean by that? Other than just I, the I feelings. I would see things that, you know, that weren't 
like flesh and blood, I feel like. You know, they weren't solid. <clears throat> but I would wake up in the middle of the night and there would be maybe a man in my room or, you know, I would be able to see him or I would see things in the walls. They were there. It wasn't mm. imagination because I could feel as well. And I would just know, you know, that that's, I know that that person's not a real man in my room, but... Aye. It, it's quite hard to explain. Children now are, I think children are always intuitive and they're o- open up until about the age of seven. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they are very open intuitively to things like that. Um, and then school kind of knocks that out of them, <clears> doesn't aye, it? They it start does. using the other side of their brain more. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, like that, and I had nobody to explain to me what was this? So I got quite frightened. Aye, but, imagine you, know, I was you would. scared. Um, so I kind of would hide under the covers and eventually, you know, it just stopped. Aye. It just stopped happening. So but, did, did you did you tell people about this? Or, you know, did you say this is happening? Did you tell parents? Did I you would, tell yeah, friends? Yeah, I would did tell, tell my mum. Did, um, did they judge you for that? Yeah, um, absolutely. Aye. You know, that was just thought oh, it's a piece of nonsense. You're, you know, you're, you're making that up, or you're having a dream or whatever. And I think I'm not. I'm really seeing this, and nobody Aye. believes me. You know, um, so that was hard yeah, not to be believed. Um, so I didn't have anybody that would support me in mm-hmm. that at all. Do you ever have that when you're lying in your bed and you're too warm, so you stick one leg out? <laughs> And you're scared the monster under the bed's going to get you. Is that really? just me? That's just you, Stephen. That's just me. <laughs> so I can't even imagine how you would feel as a child yeah, with that kind of experience. Just... So I mentioned that you're 37, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just to put that in there. But uh, you know, I, as it's, it's funny. I was watching, it was, I think it was a, a comedy show and they mentioned something like that. It's, you know, they, they made a joke of the, that whole situation and they said, you know, isn't it convenient that it ghosts always appear in the most creepiest places like a dark room. It's like you never hear somebody saying, oh, I've seen a ghost today doing Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? That's very true. That's very true. I mean, I, I, it wasn't just at night. I would feel it. If I was Aye. in my bedroom alone when I was a child, I would I would sense that there was somebody there with me, you know. And it was quite creepy, you know, when you, Aye. especially when you've got nobody that believes you. Aye. You know, that was quite hard. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, that's why I started like working with children and doing a little kids club called Bright Sparks Mm -hmm, because I didn't want children to feel that isolation or they had an experience but they didn't know what it was and they became frightened of it you know so um, when when we used to run the clubs the kids would um, be showing all you know the crystals or they would be able to talk quite openly about angels or you know fairies or whatever they wanted you know because I'd never poo-hooed that you know if they in their imagination tells them that they saw something I'll list, openly listen what mm-hmm. did you see tell me how you felt mm-hmm. you know my grandchildren are quite intuitive you know and um, and I never you know put that down and say well what did the man look like because I want her to believe that she did see something mm-hmm. you know and that she's not She's not stupid. You know, that happened. So yeah. you've got to, you know. I think that's part of the problem with everything. Do you know what I mean? Kids are told what's black, what's white, what's this and that. Do you know what I mean? Not, uh-huh. not allowed to express themselves exactly. as much as they should be. Yeah. Um, and then they, they turn into grown-ups with their, their own judgments. So what you're saying is absolutely right. And I think, sceptical or not, <clears throat> um, I'm certainly un- uh, under the belief that if you believe that something's helping you whether it is or whether it isn't that's all part in my opinion it's your mind that's doing it so if I'm holding a crystal and I believe that this is helping Mm -hmm. you know that could be inanimate and doing nothing but if my mind's making me believe that I'm feeling better then you know it is so there's certainly no judgement for that respect but I can imagine people that would just you know when you see go back to that eerie fairy word you know yeah, people would and I'm probably one of the most grounded people you'll meet you know I'm not in that way I'm not all up there, you know, with the the angels and the... I mean, I, there's things I believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, they're part of my my thoughts, my emotions, my beliefs. Um, but I don't spend my, my life there. I think that's the wrong way to live. It's something I struggled you know. with, um, you know, going along to these holistic fairs and things uh-huh. like that. Is there is a lot of that um, within that community that, kind of slightly alienated me from it a little bit that was just a bit out there and some people were just 
overly, I don't know, eccentric, I think was the, the word, the word that springs to mind, I think. You must yeah. get the people, you're obviously going to get the people as well that exploit it for all that it's worth. Aye. Do you know what I mean? I think Purely that for happens money, in every walk For of monetary life. gain, and that probably devalues exactly yeah. what your beliefs are as well, and that, that won't help the situation. Yeah. There's some genuinely lovely people, well, you know, Peter, thank you, Peter, Peter um, Maguire. Yep. Lovely guy. Um, you've seen Tom, Tom Rannikin. Play at the Aye, Mother Aye, Mother Aye, Concert Hall. Long time ago. Hi, Tom Rannikin. Yeah, uh, he played Mother World Concert Hall. But it's, uh, there's some. I uh, met <clears throat> Tom, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 times I went to yeah. see Tom. Um, he's and a lovely he, guy. He's, he's another guy that's really diverse in what he does. Aye. He does, you know, personal fitness. He does. So he's doing the body stuff. He's doing the mind stuff with NLP and hypnosis and uh-huh. things like that. And then he, he does, he tunes in you know, as well with his intuition. So he's very rounded and uh, grounded in what he does. And I kind of do that a lot of that, not so much the personal fitness, but I do, you know, I like to marry science and spirituality, a wee bit like David, uh-huh. you know, where um, I, I also like to bring that aspect in, you know, mm-hmm. as proof for some people um, as well. So I'm right now studying a lot on uh, epigenetics, which is a new... A new slant on, you know, um, how our um, how our bodies affected um, through energy and right. things like that. So next year, I really want to maybe help people with that side of life. You know, right. so that's. Um, so how would you go about that? What's what's if you don't want to reveal too much about that? What what is epigenetics? Ep- yeah. Well, well, uh, that's quite a big subject all on its own. And to be honest with you, I probably don't know enough. Right. yet to, to get into discussion with yeah, it yeah. Um, but it comes at, I touch on it a little bit at the back of the book because I was just beginning to get into it mm-hmm, at mm-hmm. that point and um, it's now becoming quite a science of um, it's like a chemical coding within the body and what they're saying is that um, your body it's not your DNA it's nothing to do with that <laughs> um, how we maybe have specific illnesses within our family and things but maybe because of the environment our (coughs) parents or grandparents lived in can still be affecting us today Mm -hmm. so it's quite a a generational thing (coughs) and I find that quite fascinating you know that that can that could something that my gran experienced maybe because of the war you know she lived through two wars could have maybe had some effect on my life today Mm -hmm. um, because it was within her Genetics, you know, so it's so really a fascinating subject. I think probably um, you see that people's beliefs and values are still very much grounded. I think the US is quite bad for it. Um, it's grounded back in their history. You know, they, they think they're entitled to something yeah. because of something that happened two hundred and fifty years ago. It's like that happened then. Yeah, <laughs> you know, move on. Yep. So I, I think you're past shapes who you are today but you can't keep holding on to it Aye. you know that's not a healthy attitude Aye. Uh, I think that's the most difficult thing to do though is let it go it's very hard for some I mean people. I'm certainly in that stage do you know what I mean I, I've there's a lot of things from my past that <clears throat> I've still got held I can but, help you with that Craig do you know what I mean <laughs> but the, the, it's very good the, uh, <laughs> the thing that I've changed to, I mean I've certainly not I've, I've not like Everything from my past go yet, but I've certainly changed how it, it, it affects my behaviour. Yeah, that's the first step it, I took. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know I was. I would. Be, like, I think I've mentioned before. Do you know what I mean? I'd be frustrated. I'd be angry. I would be snappy, and that's the first reactive. thing. I've, I, I reactive. That's the first thing I've addressed is yeah. to look at that and reflect on my actions, and yeah. then at some point down the line, all these things that have been bought, I will eventually let them go. But yeah. it's a long road, and we'll get there eventually hopefully some of it can be learned behaviour you know from <clears throat> parents and things like that as well because as I say kids you know up to about the age of seven they, they're like sponges they absorb their brain's not a rational brain it can't reason at that stage so they're, they're what they see is what they trust and believe you know so if what their parents are doing or saying or showing them mm-hmm. in their environment is what they believe to be the truth so a lot of the you know, things that maybe we take on as adults maybe have already been preset from childhood, Mm -hmm. you know. So it's looking at, when I do some of that work there, um, you know, like uh, seven keys, 
Um, that's f- to help people look at their life from the time they were born and right. really look at their, their whole soul map, you know, where, where their journey, you know, and look at the pitfalls and look at the twists and turns and what was going on around that time and how does that how did that help me or did it hinder me, you know, and see if there's a pattern forming as well. So it's quite an in-depth way to to work. And that's the way I, I, I don't think that's airy fairy at all. You know, I think no, that's definitely very not. grounded work mm-hmm. there, you know. Um and it's it's truly honouring each soul and, and the journey that they're on, because it all matters. Mm-hmm. And if they if they can change, then it helps their children change. Doesn't <coughs> Absolutely, it? Absolutely, aye. Definitely. Um and and that's probably the the good thing, I guess you've got parents out there, if they've been affected, um, unfortunately, they'll pass the same thing on and it'll be, you know, that, that step won't change. But for example, for probably the likes of us, we have our kids, we'll see the, maybe the mistakes, maybe that's the wrong word to use, the mistakes that were made, certainly by our parents, and we'll recognise that and say, right, well, I'm definitely not going to do that and yeah. raise our kids to be, to be better people than... And, and take it for theirs, you know. I think a lot is just circumstances of the time. It's just the culture and the environment yeah, of the time. Environment. You're saying mistakes is not necessarily mistakes. Aye. It's just they didn't know any better. That's, it's just right. that's mm-hmm. I think the West of Scotland's particularly bad for stifling ambition. Absolutely. Um, it's, you know, the, the phrases, you know, like, better the devil you know and a butt in the hand is worth two in the bush it's all exactly. to don't keep climb you too high you're further to fall <laughs> um, things like that I think it's steeped in our culture yeah, here um, still very much the case maybe we're transitioning out of that slightly yeah. the the work that you're doing it's certainly more recognised and a bit more accepted now things with mental health as well totally. we spoke about before we started recording Aye. it's just generally um, there's more awareness about it. Yeah. There's still not enough, but there certainly it's come on leaps and bounds. I think of back when I was uh, 14, 15, when I first had issues with mental health and my, my dad just didn't understand it. Yeah. But that's no slight in my dad. It's just, it, it wasn't, there wasn't awareness about and it, it, it then. it was never talked about. Aye, exactly. You know, especially with men. Aye. It men was, just it was under wouldn't... the kind of whole, um, pick yourself up and go on with it. Yeah. That was the whole mentality of that generation at the time. And I still question whether now, because obviously I've used this word before when we've spoken about it, mental health, it seems to be like a bit of an epidemic. Mm-hmm. And I wonder whether it's, is it worse now? Or is it just the same as it's always been, yet it's out there and it's open? It's more open now. I that's think what that's I a good question. point, Craig, actually. So, and I don't know whether that's the case. I don't know whether, you know the way the world is now that mm. more people are having issues with that or whether as we say you know it's just more open so but either way it's it's widespread mm-hmm. and um, I think there's a lot of pressure on life nowadays compared maybe you know even when I was younger um, to have the best of everything to have the best car and all <clears> that all that you see on online as well is is that constant bars getting raised higher and higher, isn't it, for people to have. Aye. They're comparing houses, comparing their clothes with the celebrities and all of that. None of that is of any interest to me Aye. whatsoever. I mean, I, I've been down that road and was bankrupted. So for me, what I treasure is not the material side of life. You know, I had all that at one time. That's gone. Um, but for me, it's family. Mm-hmm. is important you know good friends are important and mm-hmm. and being able to I mean I, I live alone so but I'm I'm happy in my own company just being able to do that on a day-to-day basis you know um, I think they're the things I treasure now you know so I think there's a lot of pressure on people out there Have you always been happy in your own company? Yeah uh, I, actually yes I have Right okay I have even at, even at school Right. I was never one for, you know, pals and stuff like that. I probably, maybe I was a bit of a weirdo. I don't know. <laughs> We're all but... weirdos, Jane. We're all weirdos. We're all weird in our own way. I, I, I kind of, <laughs> I, was, I was never one for, um, like, a best friend and all of that. That uh. just wasn't me. I actually felt more comfortable in men's company. Mm. 
uh, than I did in women's company. Even when I started work, Aye. I felt more at ease talking to me. I always feel comfortable in women's company. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> the lap dancing doesn't, doesn't count. You know? no, no. Those days are by. <laughs> but uh, I, I think even now, I'm, my friends are, I don't mean to say they're few and far between. Um, I have a, a very big circle of people that I know, uh-huh. but I maybe don't have a close connection, if that makes sense, Aye. with that many. So, um, although you've wrote a book detailing your, your your journey, you wouldn't necessarily sit down and open up to a friend and do I that did kind all of that. Thing? I, I really, I mean, I spent probably most of my thirties and forties talking every day right. about what was going on in my life. Till I think I sickened all my friends because that, that was all. I, that was my whole subject of conversation Aye. was the drama that I was living in at the time, and I tend not to do that so much now. I work it out for myself. Mm-hmm. You know, if there is something going on, and I don't really have these things happening in my life right. anymore. Um, I don't have the complications and the drama, um, and I'm not the reactionary person that I used to be. Mm-hmm. You know, I was your n- total drama queen. You know, <laughs> I know you don't believe that. <laughs> no, I can't, can't imagine that for a second. <laughs> um, but um, I'm very happy in my own company. I'm never lonely. Um, uh, I mean, I always felt maybe I would like to meet somebody, you know, to share my life with again, but it's never happened. Maybe you should it's embrace not... technology. Maybe I should. Get on, t- get on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Tinder and... swipe the ring, mate. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a wee super like. <laughs> Tinder and Bell Hill. Oh, a bit of minefield. No, <laughs> oh, no, we'll just see. If it's meant to be, it'll have somehow. I... It's not, it's never really foremost in my mind. You know, I'm just one of the lead back folk now. <laughs> Take life as it comes. When you're happy in your own company, that makes you a better friend. Do you know what I mean? There's people out there that that, that strive to be with other people because they need that. Aye. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's desperation. Yeah. And that's the people that need to kind of sit, take time and sit back and realise, right, I need to be happy with it. You know, it's it, the, be happy else. with yourself. Happy with yourself. Happy in your own company. I'm certainly happy in my own company. I like my own company. Aye. I'm yeah. the same. Def. There's always, don't get me wrong, there's always room for improvement in here, you know. I mean, I don't think for a minute that I've reached the pinnacle in my life, you know, uh, no matter what my age is now, but I think um, there's that that knowing that you're okay. Is it 32? That was it. Got it, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going no further, just change the subject now. <laughs> what about the bright sparks? Are you still doing bright sparks? No, we stopped doing them because um, the commitment is hard for people now, you know, and I think there's so many social activities kids do after school oh. and it, the numbers were going down and down and right. down and the same with other groups that I used to run and I think well I'm putting all the effort and the work in here but nobody's kind of coming along time to call it a day yep. and when I, I kind of make a decision like that I'll just let it go you know but I think with Siobhan and board and doing things like this that helps put you know ideas out to people uh-huh. Um I'd consider maybe teaching kids like meditation and all those kind of things. That's basically what we did at Bright Sparks. They'd always end the night in floor meditation work yeah. so that the kids went home chilled, Aye. you know, and not hyper. <laughs> yeah. Aye, that certainly happens at, uh, at the nursery. My wee boys, uh, they do like uh, wee excerpts of yoga and stuff like that. Oh, really? Do you know what I mean? And Riley will come back and he'll show us and stuff. And I think that's great. Do you know what yeah. I, mean? that's, I don't know if, if that's all through nurseries these days but certainly the the one that we have them and they do stuff like that and it, it really helps him and it's it's, it's fun to see totally because he loves it you know what i mean he finds it a lot of fun and he'll show us the wee poses and the wee moves and stuff like that oh, and, i think that's brilliant you know so i think you know if meditation was taught in schools or, or put into schools in some format <clears throat> then kids would have a very different aspect Aye. on a day-to-day basis, you know. Um, but then that's just how I feel about it. You no, know, I it's think, a great tool. I think generally there's not enough you know, life skills, things that are going to be useful in your life taught in schools. Aye. It's like I, I've never used the cosine of the tangent of something in my life. Of what? Exactly. <laughs> I, have you know? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Do you know, that kind of thing where Aye. I think life skills, and to me, 
meditation because I use it and it works for me, so I might be slightly biased, but I think it's definitely something that should should be taught. Completely. Um, yoga as well. Yoga is amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of people with physical health, they they're they're worried about the aesthetics of it rather than the the vehicle that's carrying you about and making sure that's Aye. that's all. Unky dory. Meditation, I think, is great. It's something that I need to work on. I, I've I've tried it, and. I must. It feels as if I'm not doing it right. Is your head yeah. going off in direction. Do you know what I mean? And maybe I'm just expecting. It's maybe my patience. Uh huh. I'll be honest with you and think maybe I'm expecting more instantaneous results. Just keep you know going what I mean? with it. You know. And you're right. I think that's what it is. I think it's just to kind of find what works for me. You're getting the right, getting the right space, uh, mentally and in the house or whatever or yeah. do you know that kind of way the, the easiest way to get into it is just by breathing deeply you know mm-hmm. see if you can just conquer your breath work that's as good a meditation as that'll really benefit your body and your mind um, and you could do that just for a minute I'm mm-hmm. sure you could do that just for a minute close your eyes and then just breathe deeply and just be aware of that and that that really helps to bring your blood pressure and everything down you know, yeah. and kind of cancel out those thoughts but um, if you can then you can maybe build that up to two minutes you know Aye. and people that struggle finding that clarity and they're you know, just letting the thoughts go um, I would usually say to them take five minutes in the morning and if you've got a lunch break at work, I mean, sit in your car for five minutes away for everybody and Aye. do it there and do it maybe when there's nobody about or go up to the toilet and meditate, you know, if that's your only place you can get freedom. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> God will not abuse you for that. Um, but I think it's, um, if you just build it up, mm-hmm. you know, that'll help. I got the well. Headspace app because I struggled with it. So I got that. Right. I used it for about a month. And it helped, I don't know what it that helped is. me get there. It's a meditation app. Right. It's 10 minutes okay. a day. 10 minutes a day you use it. Yeah. And it got me into that way of thinking. And as you say, it was the breathing for the me. Breathing. Focusing on the breathing. Because when you focus on your breathing, it clears the mind. Absolutely. Uh, Certainly it, for me, it's, it's, it's trying to get to sleep. I'm I'm terrible, terrible at sleeping. Mm. And probably not for any other reason than I like to in a positive way I like to think I've just got a creative mind and it's just 100 miles an hour mm-hmm. and for some reason when I just want to settle down and go to sleep I can't you can't shut and off and something will just pop into my head would you listen to music do you know what I've, uh, the main thing I do now is have like a a YouTube and it's got like 10 hours of uh, a thunderstorm with rain right and that seems to kind of let me tune into something else. And that's what I have on the background, yeah. you know what I mean? A thunderstorm. A thunderstorm. A big difference. <laughs> so that's exactly, that's exactly the thing that seems to, well, that's, Do you I've know what's good, use. Craig? Maybe you should try is theta music. So that lowers <clears throat> the brain waves into that meditative state. What was that called? Theta. Theta music. Music or theta sounds. Right. So it lowers your brain waves, um, mm-hmm. taking you into that nice, peaceful part of uh, you know the, the mind all right so try that right. maybe before you go to bed and that might help you crash with the, the thunder and light <laughs> I like the thunder and light <laughs> strange boy ah uh, yes <laughs> that's what they say <laughs> so what's next for you um, um, are you going to write another book I would like to write another mm-hmm. book and I'd like to get back I've got, oh, I don't know how many, maybe about 12 on my computer, mostly written children's books. Mm. Again, it's not a sign of money. I just don't have the, the cash uh, to, to get them all out there. If a publisher would come along and say, we'll back you on it, great. But you really need um, to have that behind you to be able to to put these out, you know. It's, mm-hmm. it's very difficult financially. But um, I would like to do some more of that. Mm-hmm. Work. Anything else on the horizon for next year? Um, this year's been for me. It's all been about my health, mm-hmm. and it's about being being able to uh, adjust again to walking. Uh, you know, because that's been 
well, that's six months since they've had my knee replacement done and it's really now given me a new lease of life, you know, because I can walk without my stick, I can get about, I've been up and down glens now and different things and, and that to me, that without pain, mm-hmm. you know, so that's... That's just been a pleasure. It wasn't good at the time. I have Ah, to say that was a horrendous operation. But my God, the benefits. So if anybody's considering or maybe worried about it out there, just go for it. Aye, definitely. Go for it and, you know, get through the pain barrier because it is tough after it. But I tell you, it'll make a big difference to life, you mm-hmm. know. Again, the technology just come on so much here. Oh, yeah. You God. see it's titanium you've it's got. It's titanium. I've got a titanium knee and plastic. Plastic. <laughs> so my granddaughter said, Nana, you have a doll now because <laughs> she's got a plastic leg and all. So it's no wood after all, you're lying. It's not wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's my head. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I just take life as it comes, Stephen. Uh-huh. I'm not in a rush anymore. And I'm kind of like, I'm retired. I'm a pensioner. You know, that's what I, I kind of always say to people. But I, I, these pass. are my, these are my, I have got my bus pass, believe it or not. I think I've used it about three times. Um, but these are my passions and mm-hmm. I just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what do I feel I want to to put out there or help people with? Mm-hmm. You know, so I think um, we'll look at the the seven keys for 2019 and, and see where that takes us, which is really, which is really my book. Mm-hmm. It's working, you know, taking you on a journey, Aye. a soul journey um, and taking each step with people, you know. So always being there. Um not as a guru, <laughs> please. Um, but uh, I definitely, as a friend. you should adopt that. You should adopt <laughs> no. that word. I like that word, guru. <laughs> I see that a lot, you know, in this kind of side <clears throat> of life. People advertising themselves, you know, as a, I'm a guru. I it is thrown think, about oh, a lot. Deary me, it come is. on. You know, uh, that, it's a bit. I was, egotistical, I, I, was watching a, I was watching a bit, um, a bit of comedy on YouTube and uh, the guy said, we're willing to reevaluate life with the word legend. <laughs> has been elevated from somebody pulling a sword out of stone <laughs> to somebody unexpectedly bringing you back a packet of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do you know, it's, oh, it's just some of these words are just thrown about, uh, yeah. aren't they? Guru, yeah. legend, icon. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Well, we need, to, we need to come up with a name for you other oh, well. than June Moore. Oh, I know, I'm even thinking about changing that, believe it or not. I mean, that was my married name and I haven't been married for a long oh, really? while. And only ever kept my name because of my kids, you know, oh, yeah. because it was their name and I felt, well, it saves any confusion. But there's times I think, that's not really my name. What's, you know? your, what's your maiden name? Wilson. I don't Wilson. even like that either. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I might just have to invent a name. Just me. Why not? Just June let's Hart have Castle. a phone in. It's <laughs> like private detective, isn't it? Oh, dear God. June Hart Castle, aren't you? <laughs> Guru. So, no. well, hopefully if people watch this, then uh, they can maybe leave a wee comment, a suggestion. Oh, that'd be good. Name. That'd be nice. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that is good. <laughs> I was to say as well before we, I think before we started uh, recording you were, you were thinking about doing your meditations and having them videoed and recorded and yeah. online so is that some? I mean is that just a thought or is that something you're going to No that's something pursue? I definitely want to do I've been threatening that for a long time um, but technology and me we just don't really understand each other put it that way We I'm can help you with that Jim Then you can become my managers <laughs> That's we'll it. just invoice you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think uh, a, lo- a lot of people um, will say that they like to listen th- for some reason to my voice when they're meditating. I'm quite funny with meditation as well. I need to resonate with the, the sound of somebody's voice. So yeah. for some reason, Aye, it seems to, you know, help people get into a, Maybe I just send them to sleep. I don't know. Um <laughs> But uh, I would like to do that. I think that's that would be nice. Mm-hmm. Cross that off my bucket list. Absolutely, aye. Yeah. It's yeah. a fine line, but I, you, I'm like that. If somebody doesn't, their voice is quite off-putting at times. I thought, yeah. I can't, I can't meditate for love or money. This guy's I just annoying me. I, I think about that. Be you. When we do this. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to meditate to my voice? <laughs> Have you it's been a change in, for the thunder lightning. He's been in the toilet <laughs> meditating to my voice. Meditating, Stephen. Stephen, yeah. Dear, dear, dear. 
uh, no, that would be nice to do that. And even uh, some maybe little meditations for children, you know, uh, just help them get, maybe get to sleep at night or, uh, you know, calm them down. But there's a great, there's great things. My friend Helena Kelman does um, uh, Relax Kids. I don't know if you've heard of that. I have. And that's a great system for children. That's a really, but again, it's very, um, it's an organised way of teaching kids, you know. So it's all about meditation and uh, taking them on journeys and things, you know. So I, I don't know all that she does with it, but I, I looked at it years ago. In fact, I used to sell the books and cassettes in the shop. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been going for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm quite, I'm one of these kind of people that goes off on a, a wee tangent of my own, you know. So um, I think I would like to do it my way rather Aye. than a set way. Of doing Aye. things, you yep. know. We can help you and we'll bring a camera that works next time. <laughs> <laughs> I only need to hear my voice. They don't need to look at me. I might give them nightmares <laughs> before they go to sleep. Oh, well, I've You'll bring six. a camera that works. Aye, aye. Aye. June's taking full blame for that not working. <laughs> but. I, I used to do it. I used to, if I did a reading in the shop, um, people kind of tape it and I go, well, you could do your best, but I guarantee it'll no work. Aye. And it just would not record... Aye. It's strange, you know. Um, but I was talking it to, to somebody Tom Rannigan as well. Oh, and I've seen a couple of things with Tom. Aye, aye, <laughs> aye. and it's it just creeped me out. But does it? Uh, to, uh, Tom's aye. How do you mean? It was just weird. <laughs> Some of the stuff going on in there. Um, Tell me about it. I don't know if I want to. Oh, I'm a big scared to cut. I don't know. It did freak me out about a couple of the things. But it's true what you said earlier. It's <clears> like <throat> when the lights go out, all of a sudden, kids are the same. The lights go out. I was like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> the bogey man there. <laughs> uh, it's weird. I know. Uh, Tom used to rent in here. Aye. You know, uh, before it became Source, and he would have his gym set up in that bit there and things and he'd come in in the morning and there'd be dumbbells just randomly positioned all over the room and you'd think how do you think a ghost could lift a dumbbell up you know but I they would he, he would you know he was like quite gobsmacked by what, the activity um, that happened in his absence so I don't like things like that believe it or not I that is not for me Maybe he can channel this one of these ghosts, you know, ghost PT. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a different, it's a different route. <laughs> no, I don't think that's going to work at all. No, it's not. That's not my cup of tea. I'm really not into that side of life at all. I don't do the ghosty thing. I no, it's not for me. I'd like, I like working with a living. <laughs> so what is what is your opinion then on the whole mediumship? Oh, I mean, I believe in it, right. um, you know, and there, I think there are some very gifted people out there that can definitely tune into mm -hmm. the other side and to, to our loved ones, you know, because they never really, no one ever dies. It's it's just we we leave the body behind and we, we carry on, you know, mm -hmm. the soul carries on. Um, uh, and I believe in all of that. That's definitely, you know, part of. What we I certainly get a few of them through our work and it's a big, big market for it. Yeah. And I've certainly, in my opinion, and certain people that do it, because uh -huh. I think it's just, in my opinion, some of it is very exploitative. And I've noticed now that if they do it on a, um, like a monetary scale, that they're doing shows, it's now stated on the poster, this show is for, for en entertainment. entertainment purposes that, only. That's by law now. By law, yeah. Yep. They must, they must... Anyone that's doing readings or anything like that, even at a holistic event, they really should have that notice up, I believe. Yeah, right. It's for entertainment purposes only. So, um, and I think that's just to keep things right, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I mean, I, we be like, you know, you said earlier, you dumped teen readings with Tom and things like that. I mean, I, I, I went down that road in the middle of a really horrendous relationship and I must have spent... I actually don't want to count up what I spent mm -hmm. on going outside of myself to find the answers. You know, go, yeah, I'll try that psychic now, I'll try this one. Um, and everybody said, oh, he's, he's a great guy. Well, you'll, everything will work out fine. And my gut is telling me, 
leave, <laughs> get away, you know. Um, and I, I never listened to my inner voice then. That's what I do now. There's a difference. And I think to be fair, most people, when they're going, certainly I, as I can speak from experience, when you're going to see a psychic, it is exactly that. You're looking out with yourself yeah. for answers because of where you are at that yeah. point. You never, and very rarely, is somebody in a really happy, positive state and think, I'm just going to go see a psychic. No, never like that. Aye. I it's totally like, agree with you. Aye. It's, again, you're looking for answers everywhere. Yeah. It fascinates, it absolutely fascinates yeah. me. We would all love to know for absolute sure, yeah. is there an afterlife? Because it brings us a little bit of comfort and knowing. Well, that's the important part of it. Do you know what I mean? And that, that in fact, that's a really important part of it because it, regardless of whether you think it's all a hoax or these people are charlatans, do you know what I mean? If somebody's going to one of these people in some form of distress and they're coming out feeling better or they're being helped, who can argue? Yeah anything about that Aye. do you know what I mean regardless of what they believe and that's you know you can't pass judgement on it if it's helping somebody I totally agree with you there but I think as well you have to be responsible personally mm -hmm. um, because you can get hooked right into it you know and you're constantly looking for proof yeah. or constantly needing reassurance or whereas if you kind of start believing in yourself and start trusting your own intuition, your own gut feelings, you know, that's there to help you get through your day, you know, without having to farm that out to somebody else to give you the answers. And I think when it comes to mediumship, where it's, we're looking for proof of our loved ones that have passed yeah, over, yeah. some people just need to know that they're okay. And mm -hmm. I've, I think that's lovely that they get that evidence, if you like. Um, but the people can get stuck in grief, you know, they can get really stuck in, they, they just constantly need to know that that person's okay and I'm going to find out if my granny's got anything else to say to me and things. You know, you've got to live your life here too. Aye. And and I think you've got to, there's got to be a fine line yeah. of what's right, you know. And, and I think a, a reliable and honest medium would say, you know, well, I, I would leave any more readings just now, you know, and, do you know what I'm saying? Not to keep dwelling on it, not to keep Aye. going after it, chasing it all the time. I think that's really important. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I, I can probably quite judge, after certain shows, that, for example, at my work, I've been quite judgy about it because there's like the, the exploitative side of it. Do you know what I mean? And, but the people in the audience, are, they're so desperate to connect. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? For the, and I used to joke about it all the time because the guy would be on stage and say, oh, I'm seeing the, the letter T and the colour red and you know somebody my uncle Tommy had a red fiesta do you know what I mean just <laughs> yeah. the most vague yeah. thing and just yeah. trying to grasp right. onto it and, yeah. Yeah. Aye, and, and make it, it fit aye that's when it becomes and now with technology you know I've, I've seen it on online as well a guy doing a Facebook live comment for a reading and you're like that you're, you're yeah. a completely different country and how can you possibly do that do you know what I mean there's bits I think all becomes a bit silly Um but again, that's just my opinion, and yeah. I can. I would far. I'd be far more um, open to it, like you're saying. If you're if you're sitting in a room with someone and they can really read your energy, energy, mm. you know, they can see, they can understand the, maybe the pain you're under or the stress or what the the answers you're trying to look for, and they yeah. will help you down that path rather than on this massive scale of entertainment. Let's just say. I know. I, I, I must admit, I mean, I think it's quite brave to go on stage and, and do that, you know. It's not something I don't think I would ever, I would never have liked to have done it. It's not my thing, but um, the, the amount of people's energies that's in that room, are all desperate, as you say, to get a, a reading or connection of some description, I, I think it's quite a brave thing to mm -hmm. stand up there and try and, mm -hmm. you know, to, to read somebody like that, you know. And everybody works differently and they get information differently as well. It's not impossible, but uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be me. <laughs> That's not Joe Power did tell me I was going to have a wee boy. But I thought there's a 50 50 chance for that to be fair. <laughs> so, <laughs> Joe, pa Joe Power's the guy that Darren Brown did the Hi. expose on. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't. It was fascinating. No. Uh, it was really fascinating. Um, Darren Brown's just an incredibly clever man. Yeah. So, a lot of his stuff is founded in the, the principles of NLP and cold reading people and that kind of thing. <clears> so, <throat> he was doing readings. 
Darren Brown. And he said, I'm not psychic at all. But what I'm doing is reading people's body language. I'm using suggestive language and things like that. So uh, uh, you should watch it. It's very interesting. It's a few isn't years it? ago now, but uh, it was really interesting. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, NLP. I, I did uh, some NLP with Ali Campbell. Um, for them that doesn't know what NLP stands for, you just clarify. Neuro linguistic programming. There you go. Um, and for me, uh, it was a kind of last piece of the jigsaw because right. I'd kind of learned about the the mind body connection with you know through David and people like that, and through I you mean know, I've read umpteen books and all of the esoteric side of life, um, but the mind was never something that I had kind of looked at, you know, in the program in the mind and mm -hmm. things. And it, it really, really was fascinating. Um, and it, it helped even with language skills, you know, how you use your language. Um, and uh, did a wee bit of the hypnosis uh, with that course. It was interesting. I didn't take it any further because it was not something I ever wanted to to be a therapist or, you know. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was just, I was intrigued to know what was all that about. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's, it's quite and it's quite intriguing, even the way that people's eyes, you know, where they go, how they look down or they look yeah. up, you know, what's going on in their brain, what's going on in their mind at that stage. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's well worth, uh, you know, if you're into that, it's well worth looking at. Definitely. I did an NLP course. I wasn't with did Ali you? Campbell. Aye. So I went to practitioner level. And again, it's something I'm not going to do anything with. Did some hypnosis as well. Mm -hmm. um, not so going to do anything what's with What's the first stage of that then? If you go to a, a, a course like that to do, what's the first thing you, they, they, um, they st you start? It's all broken. It was my, certainly the, the one that I done was just broken down into different kind of yeah. modules. Yeah. Either kind of course book you work through just the same as any other course I suppose uh, I think so I or think they're all quite standard right. um, I think they are aye well I think the guy the guy that I trained with trained with Ali Campbell so right. he probably used a lot of his content anyway um, I don't know that's a good question I don't know. I can't actually remember how it was broke up. Me neither. It's basically <laughs> Daniel. I'm glad you took a lot of it. Daniel <laughs> <laughs> is basically how the mind's wired. Yeah. Aye. It's, that's yeah. basically the nuts and bolts of it. And as June said, it's mm. how you're accessing the mind and how you can rewire the brain. Um, the, the bit that I liked about it is you, the, the phobias part. Um, uh -huh. Overcoming phobias. And it's just the way that phobias and fears are represented in the mind. Yeah. Right. Definitely to things like that are pleasurable to you. Mm -hmm. So if you are if you love ice cream, but um, you're scared of snakes, they're represented differently. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> they're represented differently uh, in the mind. The, right. the way that the, yeah. the, the picture them, whether um, it's vibrant in colour, the pictures, whether mm -hmm. there's sound in, the, in that, you know. Kind of stuff, so ah, it's fascinating. I find it, I certainly find it more interesting. In terms, you know, the whole thing be the power of the mind and stuff ah, like that. And it's yeah. like the wee, I think I read it was about like a, a very, very simple experiment that said throughout your day, try just smiling at 10 people in the street. Do you know what I mean? And if one, yeah. you know, if one person smiles back, because that you know yourself. If you walk past somebody and you don't know and they're smiling at you, I mean, we said this before this <laughs> in Scotland, you're like. What is it? What's, what's, what's wrong, wrong with me? You know what I mean? Three like, people <laughs> asked that. That's exactly the like case. But really, when, really, the answer when somebody does that is just meant to make, meant to make you happy. Do you know what I mean? And if more people done that, then maybe more people would be happy rather than being doer bastards. But Aye. you know, as it, it, it's it's one of those things. I, yeah. I find it interesting, and I want to kind of learn more about it and learn more about the power of the mind and stuff. Aye. And, all that kind of thing. I think what I, what I took away from it was a very personal thing and um, when I really understood that the way you see something in your life, um, although you think, you know, it's the same scenario for the other person, it's completely different. They'll mm -hmm. see it in a whole different perspective, you know, and that brought a lot of um, closure. I, my um, my son and I have we've not really been part of each other's lives for a long time, and um, I could never understand why it happened. You know what happened uh, between us, and all of a sudden I thought, well, the way 
that that was given to me was then he's not seeing what I see, feel, sense and know. He's seeing it in a completely <coughs> different perspective. So can I give you a bit of, you know, for me, it gave me a wee bit of help mm-hmm. to understand, you know, the, a wee bit of clarity, if you like. So it was quite interesting. So I always make sure that I will say to people, so how do you see that in your life? Mm-hmm. You know, because you tend to assume they see exactly Aye. what you do and they don't, you know. So it's really, it's, uh, it's important to get that understanding of the mind as well. <clears throat> Absolutely. I found it really interesting. And again, none of it's airy-fairy. No. Keep going back to that term, it is just pure logic and how the how the yeah. brain works and how it's wired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, really interesting. Mm. Yeah. We are very interesting beings as humans. Aye. <laughs> Apart from Craig. <laughs> thanks, thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Just take me right back. <laughs> <laughs> so you've um where can people find you? Um on you're online? Um I am currently well Siobhan is currently doing a website mm-hmm. and so that's just been under my name, June mm-hmm. Moore. Um and you usually get me on Facebook, you know. So I think between now I've this year I've just not really wanted to be out there doing so much and taking a lot of pressure on Mm because it was all about healing this old body of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but next year that's going to be a bit of a shift. Um, So we'll we'll get the seven keys up and running, have a community-based forum for that and the Mm -hmm. website out and see what happens. Take it from there. As I say, I don't, I don't tend to, pre-plan a lot now just see what happens and what the universe will bring in and personally I'd like to do more like uh, going out and speaking at events because um, well Siobhan calls me Billy Conley because I, I start off on one tangent and I end up on another <laughs> one um, but I think that's to be <clears throat> that my, my stuff can come across better mm-hmm. You know, than reading about it. Just is there any fairs? Is Siobhan organising any fairs? Next year, February, the uh, third uh, of March, the third, third of, March. of the third, uh, another Alona event uh, for her. So that these are good days. You know, she she does work really, really hard bringing that together. Mm-hmm. I thought you were doing something. Um, uh-huh. I just couldn't remember what it was. Yeah. So I'll need to think about that. What are you doing? A talk. Are you? Yeah. Good on you. You should do a talk. I've taught. She's not have her mother at it. So, mum. No. Listen, we will surprise and you come up and do a talk with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting you off the hook. <laughs> we'll do a live podcast from the Alona. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Um, <clears throat> I went to ask you actually when we were talking about the book. So, for people that have read it, have you had, uh, has there been any people getting in contact with you with positive? There's about that's kinda... 50 reviews on Amazon at Good. the moment um, and they're all, there was, in fact, there wasn't even a negative comment. There was one that was, that they enjoyed the book, but they didn't get the end of it. And the end of it's all about alchemy, you know, so it's right. a wee bit, um, maybe it, this, they loved the story, but then that bit was the airy fairy bit ah, for them. They, they just them. didn't Aye. get that bit, you know, but they're all they're all really nice comments that are that must be quite heartwarming and that was for yourself astounding for me Uh, because you kind of think well it'll go out there and it'll do its job I mean there's no way I will ever I've never made any money from it because it it cost me so much to get it out there Mm. but the thing is I did it and that was a big thing you know Mm -hmm. because for years people say you need to get the book written you need to write that book and so I mean it, it happened and I've done it, and I'm very proud of it. Um, but uh, it's on Amazon. In fact, I've reduced the price in Kindle. It's only one ninety nine or something like that right. on Kindle, and you can there's some copies in in source. Right. Um, Is it on any other online retailers? Amazon, Amazon the main one. Amazon, Amazon the main one. We can put that. Link we'll stick in. a link up. You put everything, your contact details, and everything that people might need to. Lovely. Thank you very much so. for that. And. Um, you yeah. can get bombarded with emails and calls. <laughs> well, and... if a publisher would just take it up, that would be great. That I mean, I think that's, I have kind of let it slip, maybe a little bit there because um, maybe I'm needing to work on my own self-esteem, if you like, when it comes to pushing myself, Right. you know, because I, I kind of let the, 
the book it did its own wee journey, but I've done nothing else with it. You know, mm-hmm. I'll talk about it and encourage people to read it if it helps them. But um, I tried a few outlets for publishers and sent books away to umpteen different places, but you just don't get anything back. Mm-hmm. But it's that that is the that is the nature of the monster out there that is publishing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's very very difficult mm-hmm. to get your book lifted. So who knows? Maybe one day. Get David to put a word on it. Hey House. For I you. sent Hey House a book because um, I know I, I know quite a few of them down there uh, because of David, um, but I, I don't think it's their. <laughs> I don't think it's their genre, you know, it's like, it's uh, maybe too personal a book for Hay House. Right. Um, and I can understand that that's not, they'll not make money from right. that sort of a thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm proud of it, so that's all that matters. Yes, that is, that is <laughs> fantastic. Well, thanks very much for coming along. Oh, you're very welcome. It's that. been a lovely afternoon. Aye, uh, when we finally get up and running. <laughs> aye, aye, absolutely. <laughs> and at the point, this point on the screen, we are going to have a whole picture of just June smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I would just not bother with that bit. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, but I thank you so much for coming thank along. Thank you us. for having me. And we've got all your details out there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorted. <laughs>